Yes. Can you do the welcome or uh, can I go ahead? Dr. Chandra? Are you there? You hear me? Yes, 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 Dr. Chandra. So I'm starting with the welcome, sir, and you yes. can do the intro. Sir. Yeah, I'll do the intro. Yes. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the core team mental health webinar series and the organizer, the Department of Psychology, the American College Madurai, and the associating partners, Madras School of Social Work, Chennai, MS Chellamuthu Institute of Rehabilitation and Mental Health, Madurai, Red Pond Educational and Psychological Center, Madurai, Psycho-Oncological Association, Turkey. We warmly welcome you all, the participants for today's session, and also the resource person, Dr. Saravanan Ringaraj, for this evening. So now I request Dr. Suresh Kumar to introduce the speaker to the group. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chandra, for uh, the welcome. Uh, dear participant, I'm happy to introduce the speaker to audience over here. Um, Dr. Saronan Rengaraj, sir, has completed his PhD at uh, National University of Ireland. And from uh, Madhuri Kamaraj University, he has completed his Master, Master of Science in Microbiology and Bachelor of Science from, uh, again, from the Madhuri Kamaraj University. When I see the career profile and uh, it goes a different role related to the research. And I can say that there is a researcher who is here and who is going to talk about that the topic which is very uh, unique in our uh, webinar series, I can say, integrating technology with uh, human health and well-being, especially for sensor technology. As per my knowledge, I think no one has made an attempt to connect these two areas for uh, uh, having that health and uh, wellness. And he played different roles such as a research officer at Wales and a research associate and post-doctorate uh, researcher and also uh, the different research program which it, it takes around nearly two decades one and a half decades he is in the field of research alone and uh, his area of research are related to biological fuel cells um, biosensors and uh, i think today we are going to have that that topic alone uh, sensor technology for human health and wellness and another one is bio electrochemistry electro surface engineering Bioengineering, such a resourceful person with us. In addition to that, for his credit, he has received many awards. For example, uh, best poster award from um, in the conference which was held in the 2016, and uh, again uh, it repeated in two twice. Another time out, he has received the same award, and there is an one more award from Charles Bosch's Energy Research Award, which was uh, given to him in the year 2012. And there are many publications. When, when you look at that, that uh, quality publications he made for his credit, it shows that the, the strength and involvement and the sound knowledge in the field of research. And many proceedings also he has uh, quality proceedings. And he made a many oral presentation. And I remember that he was invited for VAT also here in uh, last month. And now here he is here for our invitation. Um, um, we are uh, really proud to have you here, sir, uh, Saranan, sir. Uh, I hope, I, I I think there are many more points are coming. I just try to cut down your introduction part. Um, it shows that the volume, voluminous in the research area he has experience. And that experience is today, it is going to help us, the, all the participants on the health and well-being. So over to you. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Arunan, sir. Uh, thank uh, you. Thank you, Dr. Suresh. Thank you for your introduction. Um, I'm going to share my screen and let me know that everything's okay from my side. Can you see my can you see my screen, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, yes sir. we can able to see. Can you see, the, can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Suresh, for a nice introduction. Um, I'm glad to be here for the 345th session. Um, I want to thank the webinar series for uh, organizing such a massive presentation, like for almost a year. And this is being conducted every day. 
um, inviting a lot of technical person, and this is not a, a small effort. Uh, mobilizing the presenters and bringing in resource person, uh, giving a presentation to uh, people, benefiting all uh, all the people from uh, under one roof. It's not an easy job, Dr. Suresh and the uh, Ministry's team, and, and thank you for uh, hosting. Uh, I know this session was very successful during pandemic. Um, a lot of people uh, when the virus right, and people benefited out of this um, webinar series, getting a lot of information, mostly on psychology. But my idea is here is to, I thought of giving something different, like how the sensor technology uh, will be using for human health and well-being. I guess this will be more related to um, of well-being and uh, webinar series uh, theme. Um, so I thought of keeping it, it will be more of scientific facts, I'm going to sh show you some evidence, scientific evidence of how the sensors uh, in real time is going to work. It's basically from my research, but I want to keep it more simple um, how the technology will be working. So, topic today is sensor technology for human health and well being. Uh, from um, Bangor, uh, from N1% of Wales, research, uh, working as a research officer. So what, what we are researching on is mostly on environmental sensors and also um, agriculture uh, field. We are looking into more into soil health and looking, looking into studying the pollution. And also we have a group of like 40 researchers in the team and they're working on different projects. We also got a, a very big project uh, monitoring the COVID-19 like virus, viruses in the wastewater, directing wastewaters through the, um, see how the pandemic is being spread and also, um, it's very beautiful, like the Wales is very beautiful and we have a lot of agriculture research in different departments around the, across the Wales and Wales is one of the beautiful country. But as you know, the UK is in a bit of pandemic. It's a, um, we have a lot of uh, surging cases these days and it's not a hot spot in the COVID, but still uh, life is running on. So with that, I want uh, a platform where the, the sensing technology will be useful for uh, well-being. I want to connect mostly the environmental sensors and sensors for human health. Why I'm in linking is both is they're both are interlinked. If environment is being spoiled, it affects the human health, and same vice versa. If human health is spoiled, it affects environment. One good example uh, during the COVID-19, uh, we are using a lot of masks and all PPE kits, and then we are discarding it to the uh, environment, so it's being polluted, and same things, so vice versa. So what what I thought. To have um, a platform to put the uh, sensors and we are talk about uh, in general and keep it very simple and have a, um, a wide general, keep it more simple for a wide audience. So just get like how the sensor works. So there are different types of sensors. It's a huge field. It's not you cannot you cannot discriminate like which is which, what is what. So it's a huge field. But I want to make it more concise and simple, uh, picking the basic science and how it's being implemented on it. So one good example monitoring environmental sensors just a Physical changes, like you can do a monitor, you can measure the gas, you can measure the uh, sound or whatever, maybe it's a physical changes, where the sensor detects and gives an output signal. Um, but for human health, the sensor is termed as a biosensor because it's being monitored, uh, it's monitoring the biological substances, blood or uh, sweat or whatever, maybe. So it terms as a biosensor and it detects, uh, gives a sensor and gives a digital reading. So this is how the basic principle of the sen uh, sensing technology. And I'm going to show how this is being useful for the sensing field. So I want to first talk about the sensor technology uh, in environmental monitoring and how this is going to help us um, monitoring the uh, environment. So I'll start the session with the uh, healthy food. So well-being starts with the healthy food. So if you look at the, the world population chart, uh, say from 1950 to uh, 2050, in 100 years, you can see the uh, the population growth. It's almost like five times, starting from 2 billion in 1950 to 2050. So we are here, say we are here on like 2020, which is close to 8 billion. So it could reach 10 or more or less, we don't know. But the most important thing is that um, the, the biggest popular, popular countries like India and China, like we have one third of the world population, right? And can you imagine like the, the agriculture, uh, industry or sector is feeding everyone, right? So feeding like well, a billion people in India, it's very hard to just like 
it's we are getting food for all the community and it's more it's more uh, pressure on the agriculture system and once the population is being uh, in, in, increasing um being we are putting more pressure on the agriculture system to get more produce for our food for our living uh in this case most people are moving out of agriculture lands are being polluted uh, the the land area is being uh, shrinking so we have all the problems so you need something more efficient to get more more produce in a short time that's where all the agrochemicals come comes in you have plant production chemicals uh, plant growth hormones and all the uh, pesticides fertilizers and soil conditioner and fertilizers are the biggest culprit of the environment you know like it it's it it's polluting the world and i show you how it's going to pollute the world i'm not scaring everyone just to say fact i'm going to tell you so if you want to have a food you need to have a high yield crops fertilizers pesticides and uh, indoor animal farmings so you need to have a uh, kind of uh, artificial things to maintain all the healthy foods so all this these are being backed back up by corporate companies so which is not really healthy uh, healthy looking for long term if it's in a good hands, it's fine. All the, all the like Monsanto or a like few other like, you know, corporate companies having the genetically modified food and then trying to uh, make it as a marketing technology and influencing all the agriculture system, which is not good. And finally, the food we get has a high health risk. Also, it also pollutes the environment. So agriculture pollution is a big threat of anything else we can see, I can say. The impacts on human health and environment. It's it's hard to believe that you know agriculture lands produces a lot of nitrogen uh, and, and nitrous oxide, which is one of the uh, main cause of global warming. So it's the greenhouse gases. Uh, imagine like 72, 74 percent of agriculture soil is being produced compared to the other things. So this is a shocking fact that agriculture is like we say, we say it's a green field. It looks green, right? But you know a lot of emissions are coming from out of the uh, uh, and also, also produce the groundwater and also methane. It's another greenhouse gases comes from uh, agriculture land. So whatever we see green is not green. So it's again it's a pollution, polluting land and also groundwater. So one good example I can show you here: the rainwater that comes washes away all the chemicals, fertilizers, and gets into the groundwater, uh, pollutes the local water water bodies and everything. So one good example is like the satellite from NASA. So it's a recent satellite taken from, I think, somewhere close to United States of America. You can see all the, the uh, algal blooming. So you, you call it eutrophication. So possibly you like you tell in like coming like it's kind of algal blooming. So this is more dangerous. Like you know, it takes all the oxygen in the aquatic system and kills kills everything. So it's going to collapse everything. So such system is being more harmful because of the pollution. So at the end, at the end, it affects the human health, environmental uh, problems, and also economic effects. So which is being more problems. So than these two things, we need to invest more. Who is going to invest in, and who is going to fix the problem, and who is going to uh, rectify all the pollution um, to make it more healthier life. So that's more important. So it's, it's a big burden for society, big burden for human uh, health, and a big burden for environment. So finally, this out of out of these kind of uh, uh, all the um, uh, agriculture practices and uh, intensive agriculture practices, I can say, it's the water gets harmful. Uh, it's unsafe water, the greenhouse gas production, and degradation of aquatic um, supply. So, what is important to fix the problem, right? So, we in Environmental Say, Environmental uh, Center of Wales, we are looking into developing a few sensors, like low cost uh, sensors that can fix the problem. So I think we are the one of the group in, in the world, as far as our knowledge, we are looking into soil level. I think we are one of the first people looking into soil level for the soil sensors. So we are, we are trying to uh, study with different sensors and see how good the soil is, how quality the soil is, how uh, nutrient uh, is the soil is. So the main effect is to, uh, for aim of the project is to develop a cost effective sensors that can use the natural uh, bacteria, natural microorganisms in the soil, and that gives us an indication, uh, uh, is a, a bioindicator how this soil is healthy. So I'm not going to talk more, more scientific here, but our devices tell how good is the soil, is it polluted, is it toxic, and how rich is with the nutrient, and then say, 
we can say how well is for good for a vegetative uh, growth. And it gives, using the own natural bacterial bioindicators, it gives a decision support tool to, to, to monitor the soil health. That's what we're trying to do in, in, in our research center. And most importantly, soil sensors. Soil is a very key thing. Without soil, there's nothing. If you don't have proper soil, nothing is in the world. So if you don't have proper soil, you don't have vegetation. You don't have clean air. Don't you don't you can't vegetate. You can't grow any um, vegetation. It's completely devastation. So soil is the basis of everything. You can have a modern technology. You can you can have a fancy uh, fancy stuffs around us. But if you don't have soil, if you don't have proper food, proper healthy food, and that's where we we are losing our health system and everything is going to be a problematic in the future. So we need to fix at this stage and look into the soil level. So we are, I think we are one of the one of the people like looking into soil. And one one product we have about to uh, deploy or uh, develop is to the soil sensors that monitors the nitrate. So why the nitrate is very important, the urea, we call it urea we throw in the field, right? So this area is too much, too much of urea fertilizer is not good for health. Already soil has everything. So we need some monitoring system to know what exactly in the soil and then throw or use, uh, apply a required amount of fertilizers that can fulfill or meet the demands. That's more important. So if you, if you, if you, if you talk to farmers, if you ask them, are they doing the soil testing? No. So they don't. The, I, it's, I cannot, I'm not blaming them. So it's, it's just the poor farmers. There's no one to support, right? That they're, they're just trying to produce food. But other than that, they, they don't know anything, right? They go into the field, work hard, grow plants, and provide food for the world. But other than that, they don't know anything. But the only, the most important thing is that we need some kind of backing up for all the farmers to provide a clean environment, a, a perfect soil environment to provide uh, food for us. So one thing is the traditional soil testing. No one does the soil testing. Just they just keep adding all the fertilizers, uh, agro agrochemicals, and all that it, to have more yield. Not necessary, like in the short term. But if you do a proper soil testing, if you do a proper handling of soil, it can generate naturally by itself. So as far as our knowledge, we don't have such system uh, sensing system in the field. But the one we are working. Uh, I'm happy to say that it worked in the field, in the lab and real field, and we are about to deploy in a different parts of Wales and try them. So we had three successful trials. We failed a lot at the beginning, but after some time, we have we had we 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 hit the ground with the soil with the proper sensors, which is monitoring the nutrient throughout continuously. So that's a one big development what we have done. Uh, I think it could be the one of the first of its kind of soil sensing for monitoring nutrient, which will be. Uh, which we need more validation to be, become more uh, practically applicable, applicable to all the end users and all other people. So this is the device looks like this. So we have a prototype developed in the lab, and it can be fixed in the in the in the soil cloud system, like internet system, and it comes to the home. Like you can you use a mobile device and say where exactly the nutrient deficiency is, and then the farmers can go on a particular site and throw just what it is required not not too much right so farmers save money out of it saves the environment and also uh he not, doesn't damage the soil and prevent the soil pollution and environmental pollution that's what happening now so what we have i'm not going to too much detail so showing one good example see how where is good like good nutrient and low nutrient level so the green is more efficient with the nutrient and the yellow and brown is like less nutrient so you can you can throw a particular amount of uh, nutrient on a particular site and it be more precise. So this is called precision agriculture. So this is one good example of how we can handle the environment in a proper way uh, to treat us and like uh, benefit out of it. Uh, so will be in future it will be a smart farming. So I think one man goes into the field because we don't we won't be having a proper uh, labor, proper people to work in in the field. So it's shrinking. So it has to be with minimum uh, person very minimal person handling all those things so why i'm introducing this term smart tech, smart farming is that this will be this is going to happen in future right your water resource is low you have a problem with soil you have problem with the yield disease and you have stress and also problem with the nutrient management so everything can be managed with the smart farming and more efficient 
So this is how the future farming will be looking into it. But I have a lot of things and I can a lot of things to discuss how this can be handled with the farmers. Some support and, and I'll, I'm going to talk more about the you know, session. Um, just after after to all the sessions here. So so this is how like the sensing farmers have everything in hand and he, he can use that resources for handling it in uh, environment in a proper way. Um, I don't know many of you have seen this news or hear this news. Bill Gates is one of the biggest agriculture land owner of United States. It's very, very hot news, very hot talk. Um, so now the Bill Gates, is, it's all in the farming. Uh, the man behind, behind the, the master brain, behind the computers, has bought most of the agriculture land. And what I think in future is he's going to take a control of all the agriculture land uh, in a pro proper usage. And he, he has introduced a, a, a thing called Microsoft Azure, like Microsoft Windows, uh, Microsoft Azure, so which will be used for agriculture system. So that's what I think I feel is it's in a good hand. If agriculture system in a good hands, it can benefit out of everything. So not taking too much, taking too much control of not giving lands to corporate and getting taking control of it. So I think this is one way. And he thinks in future, agriculture is the, the main basis backbone for any country and water resource is the one, one of the important thing for any country for uh, having a healthy lifestyle. So I think what I why, what I see in five, 10 years, he'll be having more of uh, sensing technologies. He has all the computers, he has all the processes, but I think what I feel is that there's no sensors working in the soil. That's where like the research, we, we, we are contributing and a few others working on, in um, other researchers in the worldwide can contribute for the sensing technologies, rolling out all the sensors and benefit the human beings. And also this is, I have seen, I have read news like from India, like hunger strike in Delhi, UP, which is painful. I don't know what's happening, but the farmers are sitting uh, in the road and fighting for the rights to fix fix the natural system, not giving the farming, not letting the farm uh, misused by a corporate and take a control of it. So this is this is very very like pathetic to see the farmers sitting and say like the farmers. If you see the boats here, farmers, we feed the world. And we are not, we are the farmers, not the terrorists. So I'm not here to discuss the politics, but it needs some. We need to think about how we can fix it uh, and resolve the problem to have a food security of future, of future generation, whatever maybe like that's more important. Uh, with that, I think I want to finish off with the environment. This is one example of how the sensors can monitor the, the nutrient for precision agriculture, uh, and then how it can be used for um, um, maintaining like use the external factors like use external input like fertilizers that can minimize the um, yeah, minimize the uh, uh, harmful effects of nature so this is kind of an integration but what what i am thinking what we are thinking and what will be in future and what will we will be using it in future and now i'm jumping into uh, uh, human health which will be more interesting uh, for the topic so I have a basic experience of developing such systems for implantable devices, implantable biosensors. Um, all my PhD work uh, during anyway Galway, like National State of Ireland, I did the most of the work is for developing sensors for implantable or semi-implantable devices. So I have a bit of way knowledge, and I'm going to bring you some kind of recent advanced uh, sensing platforms. Uh, what how it can be useful for the uh, health of uh, uh, human being. So. It's amazing, like the body is a sensor, right? Uh, it really is like if you see the five senses, like sight, touch, smell, taste, and hearing. So this is more natural, right? It's amazing to see how our body itself responding to the environment. Skin, you can touch, temperature, pain, and then tongue, it taste, gives a taste, and whatever. If you have a, a sweet or a bitter taste, it senses immediately, right? And nose, you can smell, you can see the uh, smell the toxic gases and everything and eye it's a light eyesight and ear you can hear the sound and everything so this is more this is more of a natural phenomenon and all this thing controlled by uh, a lot of networking the body is kind of nerve and neurons which takes all the information from different parts it's very complex no one can replace it and no one can replicate it and it's very hard it takes and it gives you all all the system to the 
central nervous system and you using neurons and you get get the sensing of all the body and if there's any problem it gives us an indication like uh, glands or anything if it's not working good it gives you indication so this this is really good but a few things beyond the natural where the body cannot sense and cannot give you indication so that's where the biosensors plays an important role for the diagnostics and that's where the beyond the human sensing the biosensors can help in future of sensing all the uh, like kind of body fluids biological functions and early detection for disease and everything and monitoring even electrical signals as neurotransmitters in the future i say all all the uh, physical like brain brain related problems or like mental health related problems can be monitored uh, in an easy way to study more so here's a quick chart to see how the, the biosensors will be using useful for knowing the health state and also it reacts to the external factors so that will be more of use in future so one good ex example like the what well, the biosensors can monitor continuously your body and gives a prediction and also it can detect any of changes i'll show you like a few examples and then you can get you can get more idea how it can look and it can change it can detect any changes on anom anomaly detection and gives an alarm and it can also use for the the diagnostic purposes so that's more important so all, all the system can be integrated for future to study all the external things happening beyond our sensing so i want to just quick and quickly introduce about a great scientist clark who invented the oxygen electro which which is used to monitor the oxygen for real-time real monitoring of patients blood oxygen levels and made surgery safer so imagine if you don't have proper oxygen sensors uh, uh, all the all the operations and medical field is going to be um, it, it's been a big stress and it's very hard so i think one invention that completely revolutionized the world is like oxygen so this is one good example and and if you see uh, so this is just the electrochemical sensor that affects everything but if you see the diagram here right the biosensor that mimics the natural system right i showed you in the previous slide you have the sensor receptors sensing organs then gets into central nervous system and gives a sensing. The same thing, the biosensor mimics the natural system. Nothing different, but, but it's man-made thing. Like you have a sensing system, it's called some bioreceptor, some kind of surface that detects the enzymes, antibodies of your body, of any biological sample. And then you can, central nervous system is like a, a transducer or electronic devices, which functions and trans, translates the data as a display signal, right? So this is how the basic biosensors, and I show you how uh, how interesting the fact is. So this is the model of the biosensor. It gives you any sample. If you give you a, like glucose, like blood, it has a glucose in it, right? And that that's that's the analyte, and that can be sensed by the biosensor and gives you a response. Okay, and this is the basic principle of any glucose sensor, right? Glucose meter. I think mostly most people are, are not not everyone is using it, but some people be using this and my, some people might see people are using this a small electrode and the electron device it looks very simple but the science behind is very amazing right it's not an easy technology that everyone has uh, like with few thousand rupees or two thousand rupees it's more like a lot of people a lot of scientists a lot of inventions went around the world people developed all the technologies for people and then invented the invented things and uh, rolled out for the uh, benefit of the people. So one system, just with one prick of blood, you know what the level of blood glucose is there without going going to the hospital. So this is a, a basic indication how the sensors work. This is the biosensor, right? It's a basic biosensor. I'm telling you. Um, I want to show you quickly how the sensor works. I want to show you a, a beautiful science behind how the sensor works. Say for example, these electrodes, right? They have kind of a, a membrane coating that has some enzymes that can detect the glucose in your blood and then it gives you some kind of a, like byproducts i'm not going much into it and with the presence of oxygen it gives a hydrogen peroxide so the more of a, a byproduct is being generated it can convert that into electronic signal so more glucose you have more electronic signal more numbers in it right if your glucose level is less, less number so this is how one technology like which we we developed like 10 years before and one of our collaborators introduced this technology. I'm happy to and proud to say, like one of our collaborators introduced this technology like 15 years back. 
and I, I, I was very happy to work with them and I had a lot of interactions to, um, while working with such technology um, in, in before my uh, doing, doing my PhD. So such system is more of useful for the society. In future, what it could be looking at, self-monitoring devices, right? Before going to hospital, there'll be in, in like next 10, 20 years, you'll be having all self-monitoring own health, wearable and semi-implantable sensors, where you can have the sensors as a patch, as a tag, or whatever maybe like HC, just fixing in your body, where you can sense based on your sweat, it can sense the glucose level. You don't need to prick, just doing the workout, like similar like uh, the sensors or a, a workout sensors, like where you work out and see how much calories burned. And there are similar, similar sensors that can sense your sweat. And you can sweat, using a sweat, it can detect the glucose and everything. So it will be monitored continuously. A few examples I can say, you can have a saliva sensors where you can just fix it. And you can see, sense the glucose level continuously uh, with some devices and uh, breath sensors, implantable sensors. And also there'll be patch, and patch sensors in future with the interstitial fluid. These are called non-invasive. They're not going to the body, like it just sits on the body with a minimum um, piercing on your skin. It can detect everything. So this, this type of sensing will be there uh, in future to benefit the um, um, human health. So one important thing I want to stress is that, since I think a lot of people, um, this series will talk about more webinars and stuff, health uh, and mental health webinar series. I want to introduce like one of the recent research going around um, in one of the Finland universities, like the sensors could monitor effectiveness of the brain treatments, right? So these sensors can play a role in tracking down the neurotransmitters within the uh, brain cells and all those things, and which will be helpful to treat the Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and schizophrenia, all the um, brain-related substances, brain-related diseases. So one example, like they proposed a vision of having sensors and they can transfer the neurotransmitter within, which is happening with the synaptic vesicle. Uh, one, one, one example they say is glucose, uh, glutamine molecule, uh, um, um, it's a neurotransmitter. So it, this is very important to track these kind of changes before and after surgery and gives you indication of how well is your uh, brain and good. So I think the one, one example I can say, my father, he died three years back with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I didn't, I didn't have an idea like what happened to him. Suddenly he, he, he stopped responding to anyone like five years back. So no one, no one else, like we did not know about Alzheimer's, Parkinson's at those times. So I know like now I'm very, very, very well aware like what's happening and how this will, um, this will affect the human health. Imagine, uh, um, to be honest, the Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, the most horrible uh, challenging for human health and well-being because it's very hard. A person who has this disease, he never senses anything. He, he can't realize the world and he doesn't have any control. And this is the person, dead person, just alive in front of you. So this is, this is more pathetic. And I hope I had few uh, research experience to study about the amyloid functions of the brain, how the, the proteins are being, being malfunctioned and that will see how the brain functions. So this is one example like what happens when if you don't have mental disorders and using such kind of sensors can help to improve the uh, by medic medication or something to improve the system using a sensor that gives a response as a signal output. So this is one example of futuristic approach. And also, there's also a um, very important thing, point of care diagnostics, electrochemical. So these sensors can detect early cancer, right? One good example, like people, a lot of people dying of cancer. So cancer is there, it's very hard to survive. So the, the problem with cancer, until we, we, the cancer cells are being proliferated in outside, like diagnosed outside, we don't know whether we have cancers. But this point of care sensors, they can sense the cancer cells well before the detections happens. That cancer starts. So, for example, this chart. While doing the risk assessment, if you have a blood sample, and they have cancer biomarkers produced uh, during the cancer cells proliferates, and this can send these sensors can sense um, and can give an indication that you might have a sin, you might have a cancer, act to it immediately. So this is to the early detection before the early detection when when the cells. When your blood cells have 
started to produce a biomarkers that is responsible for cancer from the cancer and you can have a uh, sensing devices so such devices are being developed it can be used for future it can prevent the cancer and you can have a proper diagnostics on the proper stage and prevent the cancer as well as with the proper medication so this is one example of how the sensors will be and this is where we are looking at the region where the sensors can be used for it so so, so these are the few things like I want to combine. There are a lot of sensing field is huge. I think you cannot with one one not to combine everything. But I, I gave you some kind of essence how the sensors can be uh, for handling, monitoring the environment, and also how it can help for the human uh, to improve the human life. So that's that's one basic idea what I have. But the key message what I want to tell you is I want to talk more in detail of all what we have is. So how much we can rely on these technologies, right? So a lot of lot of science, a lot of research is going on, a lot of technology is coming out, but how far we can trust them? So how far how far the science and technology progress will benefit the humankind? So that's more important. So there's a lot of product, a lot of commercial product, a lot of technology is being commercialized and brought to people. And this is very important, whether the, the proper science is bringing a proper product to the uh, environment. And also I think most of the scientific community like we have a lot of government fundings, but uh, we don't have a proper output. I say most of things goes into publications, but never comes out of to real field. So things has to change. But one thing I want to talk about, like with the, the smart, smart sensing and farming, I want to insist that even though if you have a simple device, the farmers, they won't use the sensors. They, they don't have a capacity to buy any. So it has to be government backed up budget to support the farming, to helping disseminating all the sensors to make it more farming safe and prevent the pollution because it's i think in future the pollution from the farming is going to be a, a massive thing so we need to fix it i think it, like a early budget for the defense and everything it has early, early budget from the government to support all the farming system with having test centers around the world having smart things smart upgradation all those things and help uh, prevent the environment and one thing is that if there's also there's too much technology sometimes ends up in disaster so you have seen like two fatal accidents of sound force of sound force on boeing flights you know so this is due to a small this sound force someone is the safest flight um in a watch which we consider and we think it's the safest flight but what happened recently they upgraded a new sensors um which went faulty right it's a brand new flight which there's a two flight accidents which killed 348 people killed in an accident. So can you imagine a three lakh rupees sensor brought down an aircraft of three crores rupees, a 300 crores rupees, right? So this is more important. If you don't have a prop, all the regulators, if they don't have a proper things rolling out for the people or the end users, it would be a disaster. So I think too much fancy stuff is not, this is also not good for um, the humankind. So this is one thing where we need to have a control of putting too much things, which is already having a uh, working well for uh, just really work for people. And this is one example of too much technology ends up disaster. So finally, what I want to say, we can if you have, if you want to have a balanced life, we could minimize or prevent using this technology. So you can what you can do is that you can stay happy, eat healthy food, no rush, no rush in making money. I think you can you can have time. I can you can think of in what way you can earn money and all those things. So that's that's where like people are more in urge to get in, putting more life and rush and take care of your environment and health. That's more important. So if you don't take care of your environment and it will affect your health. So we need to be more of uh, more uh, having realizations on how we are going to protect our environment like, and then take care of the health. Connect with people, which is more important. Um, I think if you don't connect and sit, sit idle, it's going to affect your brain. So in UK, I think there's one particular study that tells you, uh, you in UK there are a lot of patients that are suffering from Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. What happens is that um, after the age of 70, 75, they are left in the care homes and they are left being alone. So that's that meant like I, uh, idleness and loneliness triggers a lot of mental problems. In, so that's a big problem in UK when people after a certain age, they, they are left alone and that triggers uh, a huge problem, a mental problem. So that's more important. So connect with people, always stay happy. That's more important to prevent. I think we 
I have studied a few things. The Alzheimer's and Parkinson's not only genetic disease. It's also it also triggers from environmental factors. As as you know, the, the I know I have heard few experts talking in the webinar series like it is not only genetic factor. So the well being if it's, there's no proper well being, it is going to affect everything. The first thing is going to be the brain problem, and that will trigger everything. So don't think genetic factors will be transforming things, but also a physical and environmental factor is going to affect the human health in future. So stay connect with people and stay happy and think about the future world. So this is more important. Why I'm saying is that like, this is just, a, it's very hard. I'm not suggesting, this is just a thoughts, how we can have it, think about the future world. So whatever the, the, the mess we are making now is going to affect the future. So what we, what we are going to give for the future children, future generation, like that's more important. So we need to leave them for a, a safe world. So we need to be more responsible. We can start thinking about, we can um, train people like growing your own farming, having one uh, produce your own food, minimizing the pressure and think about more um, environmental friendly approach to minimize the use of these technologies. So this is how like, how it can be uh, more benefit to the people. So I think, I just bought some some kind of essence that can uh, link the sensors will be useful for environmental monitoring and health things. And I, I I think I delivered some kind of useful information for for this webinar series uh, um, for for listening and being be patient. And thank you. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions and I'm happy to be more interactive. So. That's why I had a short presentation. I'll be more happy to be have uh, people interact with more people. Dr. Dina? Okay, Dr. Dina? So dear participant, I think uh, you can ask, you can interact with the resource person right now, and Dr. Nina will uh, take care of that key on the SSC. Both you, Dr. Nina. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for that wonderful session. Uh, and uh, a new topic uh, regards to the technology, how it could be, be a part of well-being. Very innovative concepts, sir. And uh, thank you so much uh, for coming up with this uh, idea and concept and uh, taking such a wonderful, wonderful session. Uh, and uh, the floor is open for question and answers. I request participants, you can either put the questions in the chat box or you could unmute yourselves and ask the questions. So Sharon and sir has made a huge impact on the audience and the uh, chat box is uh, flooded with uh, lots of uh, positive feedbacks. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. I, uh, I can hear you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, it was a wonderful session, sir, and very informative. A uh, very new concept also about the soil sensors. Uh, I haven't read it anywhere, not heard about it. It was really wonderful yeah. and informative, sir. Uh, yeah. I just have a question. Like, uh, India is basically an agricultural country, and uh, I mean, uh, they are taking lots of missions to develop and all that. Uh, since uh, it's very difficult to educate the farmers and such, how is it possible to apply in a huge country like India, sir? How how can we, you know, make them yeah, uh, aware of the present uh, findings, discoveries, inventions, whatever, apply it to their day to day? As you said, uh, the government has to take a stand. But now uh, every other person has just bought a field and they're doing farming on their own. When will we get to reach about this latest information to people who are interested in farming, sir? How can we reach yeah. all this? Yeah, it's time to change things because we have people talking about the organic farming and everything. 
I think it's very important to educate farmers. So that's that's a big challenge. It's a big uh, a good question from you. So the more important is that like there should be a centers like um, agriculture centers in every every region, and that can always help back up farmers and provide support system. So that's the only way they can do. And you can organize some meetings uh, every, every every region, um, inviting farmers and showing educating few things. So it can be done uh, as a free of cost of service oriented. And I think more the farm more farmers will be willing to do that. So. At, at present, there's no such initi initiatives to do that. So if you have such initiative, and definitely we can uh, bring out all the technologies and we can help. I think there are a few centers happening. I think uh, my wife, she's from agriculture background. She used to tell like there are a few things, a um, few group, uh, non-government organization and non-government organization that can support go into the real field and help farming. So help farmers in uh, and educate them what how it can be uh, used so I think this is the starting point and where like um, at some point everything will be implemented and there will be a need without these technologies or like these things, um, these things is impossible. So I hope at some point will be useful. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, I, I can say that it is a very unique presentation, integrating yes, sensor yes. technology with uh, health and well-being. Uh, my yes. question is here for developed countries. I think they can able to spend huge budget funding for uh, this kind of uh, research and initiative. When we take about the developing countries, I think there will be uh, the strain will be more among that uh, funding. How we can overcome it? When it will take? Once they have done a research. And when they come up with a low cost technology, is it possible? And, and uh, yeah. uh, is it possible to implement this kind of system when the developed countries were getting the benefit out of using this technology? And what are the strategies we can adapt? Yeah, I think um, in terms of research, like if you compare the Asian and European countries, I can say more research is being carried carried in the Western world. Yes. So if you see the region, like before, now I think China is developing more, like they're moving, moving to more research. I think India, India also we are doing research, but not that actively. Like I can say there's two type of um, thing in the world. The one, one part of the world that produces technology and other parts, they're just buyers and consumers and users. If you take India, I'm not, I'm not blaming anything. In take of, if you take India, we're just technology buyers. So we're not, we're not, the inventions are very low. We have a lot of resource people. We have things, but only thing is that we have a limited amount of funding and fundings are not reaching into our proper hands. And though we have funding and all the research is not coming into a real field. So that's where the problem is. Like, I think now what I hear the, all the DBT, all the funding bodies in India, they have a mandatory rule that you have to collaborate with the industries because Whatever the money they fund, they publish, and that's that's the end of the day, the end of the research. It's not coming out of the field. So once you have a collaboration with industry, they know how to take the technology from from the lab to the uh, to the end users. So it's it's very hard. Like I think if you need if you need to advance things, you need to have a technology. You, you can't always source or buy technology from outside. So we need to have our own technology. We have money, like when well, a country has money, you can buy it. It's again, it's a problem and the burden to the economic um, situation for the budget. So it's more, it's, it's only happen like the government has to uh, support more research, more realistic research, and particularly pick which is more useful for society and solving the current problem. So one good example, like India is doing, uh, producing vaccines, right? We are, we are exporting vaccines to other countries. So that's one, one good example. Like this is how it has to be. So that's one good field where we have a good farm, pharmaceutical, we have a good IT sector, but we need to also need to have a good science sector to do all to keep it. We have a potential. I think we, we have everything. The only thing is that I can boldly say the political system is not in a good scenario that supports, a, it doesn't balance things. That's the only thing happening. So once we have, a proper political system, 
it can be in a balance and it can benefit everyone. Okay. Uh, dear participant, if you have any uh, feedback or uh, questions related to the today's presentation, you can welcome and then you can ask the questions. This was present. Yes. I think uh, there is an uh, Dr. Chandra Ramakumar. She is an our uh, continuous uh, participant and uh, she in wonderful session. You have been so uh, physically, chemically, biologically, information with sensor technology. I learned lots of new messages from this session. Thank you, sir. Uh, so. Thank you. Yes, yes. Suresh, sir. Yeah, now, uh, now I request Dr. Mary now. I think there, more, there is no more questions from the participant. You can go ahead yes, with that. Yes, yes. Feedback and then what happens. Yes, uh, like I told, it was an excellent session, excellent session, like uh, to bring uh, two factors of science, the technology as well as the well-being. And um, we would like to have uh, such more uh, innovative programs in the future sessions. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, participants, I take this opportunity. It's an honor for me to place this vote of thanks for today's expert, uh, uh, Sharon and sir. Uh, and on behalf of uh, the Department of Psychology, American College, Madurai, Madras uh, School of Social Work, Chennai, and MS Chalamuthu Trust and Rehabilitation Center, Madurai, Psycho-Oncological Association, Turkey, and Schizophrenia Research Foundation, Chennai, and other associating partners, partners. Please, do please do accept our gratitude, uh, uh, sir, Saravnan, sir, sir, for today's sir, excellent today's presentation. presentation. And thank you, participants, for always being there and showing your immense support for such long period of time. Your support is what is making us to go ahead with our webinar series. Thank you, one and all. and. Kindly send your queries and feedback to my webinar feedback at gmail.com. We will meet tomorrow with eight another wonderful session. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. So thank you. Thank you, sir.